Hello everybody, welcome to the IMIT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dar and as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are back and we are continuing with the um, Azure Stack series that we've been doing and we're really focused on Azure Stack HCI now. And obviously at the right at the start of the, the series we spoke about the different, you know, different um, capabilities in Azure Stack, obviously Azure Stack Hub, Azure Stack Edge, um, but sort of demos have focused around Azure Stack HCI. Uh, and today we are continuing on that topic and we're doing the start of the integrations today, talk about the integrations and we're going to do, we've already done integrations in the demo like with Kubernetes and Azure Rack and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. So this is part one of the integrate Azure Arc and Azure Stack HCI topic. It's a three part topic. Um, so today uh, we're going to focus on characteristics and capabilities of Azure Arc. Um, so Azure Arc is an example of a solution which allows you to, to manage sort of disparate, disparate environment, sorry, at scale. Uh, it allows you to enhance security across the entire sort of uh, company and organization. So, you know, it can't be compromised or it mitigates compromise, compromisation. It also allows sort of uh, developer agility and innovation of sort of your critical business um, applications. And this allows you to the business to succeed and thrive. Maxify provides like tools and, and, and solutions that help customers uh, like, like the clients that we all have to innovate their sort of hybrid environments in their sort of secure manner. Also, which minimizes the sort of management overhead, which is quite important as well. And it consists of, you know, Zero Act consists of, you know, technologies that, that you can simplify, that help you simplify the administration of, co of your complex sort of distributed hybrid environments. So this diagram, you know, is, is really good for, for looking at those Azure data services and, and, and the management. So we obviously have that user on the left hand side or an admin, and then we've got Azure Arc, um, which then filters into sort of different um, locations, let's say. So you've got multi-cloud, which could be GCP, AWS, etc., but also that edge technology as well, which is where Azure Stack Edge comes in. But also, so you know, integrating with on-premises excuse me, on premises. So that's where Azure Stack HCI, um, you know, comes into play. And that's kind of also Azure Stack Hub as well, but obviously that's the sort of offline version as we know. But then if we go dig a little bit deeper, we'll look at the sort of Azure management uh, area of it. And that's where we've got Azure Resource Manager, the Azure Portal, Azure Policy and CLI. But here's where we have sort of the integration with Azure. So we've got Azure Rack on the left hand side. That's where sort of our resources in our sort of customer locations can, can collaborate. We've got our local management tools as well. Um, but then we can also connect that from a network perspective with, with Azure. And that's where we have our customers, the tools and experiences like the, the PowerShell and the Portal, Portal Shell and CLI. Um, we can get like single pane of glass management within the Azure portal, sort of cloud native practices as well. Uh, it's where we can manage our RBAC from, our robust access control, and also it's where we get like the Defender Cloud purview. So all our very good uh, security compliance services. Uh, and that's where we can, how we can secure those resources in Azure. Let's talk about supported resources now. So Azure Arc supports Azure integration with several distinct scenarios for different types of resources residing outside of Azure via, via multiple offerings, including Azure Arc enabled servers. Uh, so these are physical and virtual VMs running Windows or Linux operating system. We have Azure Arc enabled SQL servers as well. So these are SQL instances running on Azure Arc enabled servers. Uh, we have Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. Um, so we've done a bit, we did a bit of that integration already in the demo. So this is, a, this is a wide range of Kubernetes distributions. We then have Azure Stack HCI, which we've spoken about as well. And we've kind of been doing all of the integrations with that in the demo. And this is a physical cluster with virtualized uh, workloads and containerized workloads as well. We then have Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI. So actually that's actually what we've been looking at rather than Azure enabled Kubernetes. We've actually been looking at Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI. And this is essentially AKS running on your stack, your Azure Stack HCI cluster. Uh, and finally, we have Azure Rack enabled data services. Um, and these are Azure SQL managed instances running on Azure Rack enabled Kubernetes or Azure Kubernetes services on Azure Stack HCI as well. Let's talk about some of the benefits now. Um, so number of Azure Arc benefits are independent of the resource type because they reflect the capabilities of uh, Azure Resource Manager. So these benefits can include the ability to um, organize all your resources by using Azure management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and tags, uh, a single pane of, of sort of comprehensive inventory of, of organizational assets across that sort of multi-cloud and on-premises uh, hybrid environment. And this includes, you know, for, for searching and indexing uh, by using Azure Resource Graph. 
The delegation of permissions is another really good benefit. And this is obviously on the management plane by using uh, RBAC as your robust um, access control. Another benefit is a uh, consolidated view of Azure and Azure Arc resource enabled resources, via the Azure portal, Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, and Azure REST API uh, as well. Uh, and the final sort of benefit I want to talk about is that integration with Azure Monitor, which is very, very important. So you can use Azure Monitor to help monitor and manage your, your server resources. Azure Monitor is a core component of Microsoft strategy to sort of extend comprehensive cloud-based monitoring functionality beyond Azure to on-premises, data centers, and to you know, Microsoft and other cloud providers as well. Let's talk about Azure Arc enabled servers now. So they're also resource type specific uh, to type specific benefits. And then for Azure Arc enabled servers, the ability to apply Azure VM extensions to automate configuration of Azure and non-Azure Windows and Linux servers in a sort of consistent manner. We then have a support for Azure Policy guest configuration. So Azure Policy supports auditing Azure Arc enabled servers in the same way as Azure resident counterparts. And this allows you to use the same approach to evaluate whether configurations of all servers in your environment comply with your organizational standards. Let's talk about um, some of the, the, the benefits of Azure Arc enabled SQL servers. So the support for advanced data security using Microsoft Trend of the Cloud and Microsoft Sentinel is a really good benefit. But also the ability to perform SQL environment health checks using the on-demand SQL assessment feature. This also provides best practice recommendations as well. Let's talk about benefits of Azure Arc enabled AKS. Um, so the enforcement of runtime policies by using Azure policy for Kubernetes and centralized reporting of uh, corresponding policy compliance. And this can allow you, for example, to enforce HTTPS ingress rigs, you know, in, in, in a Kubernetes cluster, or ensure that containers listen only to unallowed ports. Support for automated updates to cluster configurations by using uh, GitOps. Uh, GitOps is the practice of automatic deployment of code residing in, in Git repositories. And, and this, in, in this scenario, the code describes uh, the desired state of Kubernetes configuration. Uh, you have the option to enforce specific GitOps, GitOps uh, enable configuration by using Azure Policy, which also provides centralized reporting of the corresponding sort of policy compliance. Another benefit is automatic upgrades and updates without any sort of service downtime. Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes Service receives updates uh, on a frequent basis, including services, patches, and new features, uh, which mirror the update management model uh, of their Azure counterparts. And finally, uh, support for auto scaling. So Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes Service can auto scale dynamically to limits dependent on the sort of capacity of your infrastructure. So let's talk a little about Azure Arc Enable Data Service before we get into the demo. So some, some benefits. So automatic upgrades and updates without any service downtime is a massive benefit. Azure Arc Enable Data Services receive updates as AKS does on a frequent basis. And this includes servicing service patching and the new features. And these are going to mirror the, the, the update management of their Azure counterparts. Finally, support for auto scale. Again, Azure Arc enabled data services can auto scale dynamically to, you know, to limits dependent on the capacity of your infrastructure. So it's demo time. So now we are going to do the first uh, sort of part. Um, again, we're going to spread it out a little bit. We're going to uh, integrate um, Azure Stack HCI with AVD. So let's jump into the portal. Welcome back. We are here in the demo tenant now. And um, so full disclosure, um, the, the, I've had a lot of problems with my demo tenant, unfortunately, um, especially with my Azure Stack HCI deployment. Um, and I've tried, and what I've done is obviously off outside of this recording, I've, I've tried to, to deploy Azure Virtual Desktop within Azure Stack HCI and I've had a lot of errors. Um, when I fix one and one comes up and, and so it's been um, a bit, bit hit and miss. So in this demo, what I'll do is I'm actually going to go through the deployment um, steps you need to take, but they might not, we, we, we won't deploy it essentially. So I'm just going to show you the steps that you need to follow. And then after these, the demos coming up are all going to be around the Nerdio integration as well. Um, so uh, first things first, let's go to the overview tab. And then um, just double check the prerequisites. Obviously it's all green and tick. So as you can see, Arc VM management is set up and Windows image available on the cluster. Uh, we've got a Windows 10 image somewhere, if we look here, uh, there should be a Windows 10 image, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's the image that we're going to use. Um, so when we go to, uh, so let's go back to overview again, and we want to actually deploy Azure Virtual Desktop. So I'll open another window. Uh, so 
choose whatever resource I'm always going to put it in my HCI uh, box there. Uh, give it a name, so we'll go to Azure Stack HCI dash HPO1. I'll give it that simple name. Leave it in ECUS. Um, UK South is not supported. I think there's an Azure policy that it sets up so UK South's not supported um, within this debt, you know, when you're going to use the jump start, so just be wary of that. Um, don't want a validation uh, environment. We'll do a desktop and then host pool type, and we're going to stick with pooled. Uh, I'll leave it at Brett first, just for the purpose of a demo. Uh, so here's again, very similar to the ABD deployment, because there are a couple of different steps. Uh, so this is what I mean. These these sort of errors I've been getting in my tenant for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's causing it, but um, I, I thought I want to get the demos out and, and, and completed um, because it's just actually costs quite a bit in your in your in your Azure in your, when you've got an Azure tenant. So it just costs quite a bit. Um, anyway, let's click on Add Virtual Machines. So again, name prefix. Again, pretty standard. So I'll go zero stack. HCI dash ABD, and then we'll let the prefix do the, the zero or the one at the end. So here's a virtual machine type. We actually want a zero stack HCI virtual machine. Um, and again, it just says to create a session host and virtual machine, you must have a zero stack HCI, which we do. Um, and then location. So this is um, uh, the the shared location. So we're not, I'll show you, but essentially this is a custom uh, storage path here. Uh, it's one of these storage paths, basically. Um, so if I go to, come out of here for a second. Uh, I think it's my, is it my Arcbridge cluster, I think? Yeah, custom location. It's that, basically. Um, so that needs, that custom location needs to be in there. Um, when you're, when, and see, this is, again, this is offline. So this is, this is one of the reasons why it's stopping me from creating this AVD instance. But anyway, you want to, you want to, Select your your HCI jump start in in when we're using this demo jump start location, uh, or your HCI if you've got an on premises one, uh, and then the images is where we can select our image. So we want to say we want the IMIT Geek Win Ten. So these are the images that are supported, um, and then the number of VMs. This is again all standard. I'm going to click on one. So it's the virtual you can either go static or dynamic. Um, so dynamic obviously. It's gonna. It's, it's, it's not gonna be the same. So with static, it stays. It says. So I'm gonna go virtual process account. Let's go four virtual processors, and we'll do eight gig of memory, for example. So we'll go sixteen. I'm not deploying it anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So this is where I want to spec, uh, select our virtual app within our HCI environment. So obviously we've got IKS one there. We don't want it on that. So we want it in the the Elnet one. Um, and again, your your jump start sort of deployment page here comes with the domain. So make sure you're using the um, domain account that you have set up for that. Uh, so mine is at, I think it's, so yeah, it'll be jumpstart.local and put your password in. So again, when you first set this up, you will put this, but you'll do that password you use. And this is just a, a local admin you can set up. Uh, let's give it a password. Okay, and then go next. So this is where you can either select an existing workspace, which I've already created, or you can create a new one. So I'm just going to select the existing one. And again, you can set diagnostic settings, tags if you want, then you review and create. Essentially, then you just click on uh, create, and then that will deploy. And, and what you'll find is, um, if you just quickly go to ABD, you'll see it as a host one here. So this is one, again, I played with earlier. Um, it says sit up, and all your VMs will join that. Same, same as you do. When you're, um, you know, when you're managing it through uh, AVD, you know, when it's cloud only, um, so we'll click on create, and then that'll go through the process of creating it. So I just wanted to show how you can integrate uh, AVD with the Zero Stack HCI. Obviously, if it had deployed correctly when I was testing it, I'd have liked to have, you know, gone into a bit more management of it. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on Nerdio in the next couple of, um, well, for the rest of the, for the demos and for the episode, just kind of going through the different integration and then deployment, um, and what you kind of need to set up there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. So we're, again, we've got, um, this is the, we've got about five, six episodes or five episodes left. Um, so towards, coming towards the end now, home straight of this series. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. Please do not forget to subscribe. I do appreciate everyone's support. I uh, appreciate everyone watching my videos. Um, it's, they're there to help people, if I'm honest. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a hobby of mine. So yeah, thank you very much for all your positive feedback. Um, I will, after this series, be continuing with the exam topic stuff that I do. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.